Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, bed crimers. As always, I wish you the best. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. Let me just ask that after listening to or watching this video, if you learned something or enjoyed it, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Now, let's dig in. Well, we finally know why suspect Brian Koberger stood silent at his May 22nd arraignment. According to his court-appointed defense attorney, Ann Taylor, Koberger stood silent to preserve his right to contest his indictment, meaning to contest the charges that he's been formally accused of, four counts of first-degree murder and one count of burglary. And now Koberger is requesting a stay of proceedings. A stay of proceedings is a ruling by a court to stop or suspend a proceeding or trial temporarily or indefinitely. He wants to stop the movement toward his trial for the moment. And the reason for that is he and his defense team are also asking for the release of all grand jury materials. You may recall that a grand jury secretly met and ultimately made the decision to indict Koberger on May 16th of 2023 for the crimes committed on November 13th of 2022 against the four University of Idaho students, Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonsalves, Maddie Mogan, and Zana Kernodal. To indict means to formally accuse or charge someone for a serious crime. Koberger is arguing, one, that it's his right to access all the grand jury materials, and he cites constitutional provisions and Idaho laws, and two, that obtaining the complete record of the grand jury proceedings is necessary for him to contest the indictment against him. It would appear that he and his team are hoping to find a compelling reason in the transcript and evidence to challenge his charges. The state, meaning the prosecution, has offered Koberger and his defense team audio recordings and partial transcripts of the grand jury for review. However, Koberger's attorneys are arguing that they are certain evidence exists that would clear him of these charges, and they're throwing out that expression, exculpatory evidence again, meaning evidence that would prove that he is not the perpetrator. And for that reason, they're requesting that the court force the state to turn over all grand jury proceedings for review. So the defense is not happy with just getting their hands on the audio recordings and a partial transcript. They want the entire transcript. Here's how Koberger's defense team is arguing that. They're saying that one, after six months of intense media coverage in a small community, that they have the right to determine how the grand jury was selected and what, if any, exculpatory evidence was shown to the grand jury. So they want to make sure that the jurors chosen to sit on that grand jury were fair and impartial and able to come to a decision without bias and maybe without already being prejudiced from all the news coverage against Brian Koberger. And two, the defense is also saying that since this case carries the potential of the death penalty and that Koberger has not waived his right to a speedy trial, that the state's failure to provide all requested materials hampers their ability to make a robust defense for their client. As a result of all this, attorney Ann Taylor filed a motion requesting that if all documents and materials aren't turned over to her team without delay, that the court should put a stay, meaning a pause, on the proceedings to allow adequate time for review of all the grand jury proceedings. The state's response shows that prosecuting attorney Bill Thompson agrees that the discovery in this case is substantial and that a major trial is set to take place four months' time. The trial is currently scheduled for October 2nd, but pretty much 
all the legal experts on YouTube have said there's little chance the trial will really take place at that time. As for what discovery means, according to the American Bar Association, discovery is the formal process in which both sides, meaning the state and the defense, exchange information regarding the evidence and witnesses they're going to present at trial. Discovery gives both sides the opportunity to know before the trial begins what evidence may be presented, and this allows them to prepare for that. So Thompson is saying, yes, there's a ton of evidence to sift through, and he's okay with a reasonable extension of time for Koberger's defense team to comply with its obligations under Idaho law. And what I believe he's saying there is, yes, let's postpone things because Koberger's team has to do certain things under the law to ensure that Koberger gets proper legal representation and that his legal rights are fully met. And Thompson also is requesting at the same time that the defense show him the same courtesy if they plan to proffer an alibi. Proffer means an offer of proof. Proffer. And so Thompson is saying that if the defense is planning to offer a notice of alibi, meaning that Brian Koberger is saying he has proof that he wasn't anywhere near the crime scene when the crime occurred, then Thompson and his team want the same courtesy of additional time to look that notice of alibi over, investigate it, find evidence that refutes it, etc. According to experts, all this back and forth is normal and it's pretty much expected in a case of this magnitude. So now district court Judge John Judge has more decisions to make. It's going to be up to him to make a ruling on the motions for extension, meaning more time, and the grand jury discovery, meaning the defense will be given everything they want from the grand jury proceedings, and they will get that extra time. Why am I feeling sorry for Judge Judge? feel like he's going to be working weekends. That's all for now. I'll see you next time on Bed Crime Stories.